Hi! Welcome to this tutorial. Today I will give you a walkthrough of using AWS Batch. Before proceeding, make sure you have an AWS account and Docker installed in your machine. Along with that, we will be using Polygon.io for getting to the open, close and after hours prices of a stock symbol on a certain date. So, let's begin by creating a new project. I am going to name it AWS Batch Sample Demo. And then I will click on Create. I will create a main.py file where I will write down the core logic. Tickers.txt will contain tickers values of 20 global companies like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, etc. Get underscore ticker function is going to return me the list of tickers. After that I am going to do some necessary imports. I will be importing the Pites module. This library allows accurate and cross-platform time zone calculations using Python 2.4 or higher. On line number 8, we need to set the date for the previous day to retrieve the day close values. We will get the API key from the Polygon website. Make sure to pass sensitive information through environment variables. After few minutes I will show how to set the environment variables in the batch console. In the process ticker function, we will be iterating over the ticker list. We will create a JSON file and insert the response which we receive from the API. If the file exists in the path, we won't call the API, else we will trigger an API call. You can observe on line number 30, we get a 429 response code. This is an interesting problem, as we hit the API rate limit. I will explain you in a while how to tackle it. Okay, now let me go to the Polygon website and quickly grab the API key. Let me run the program and see what happens. There are few successful API calls, and in the left, you can observe few files were created. Great! We received the data. As I was speaking few minutes back, the rate limit. You can observe in the console after 5 API calls, we reached the limit and got the 429 response code. The reason is, we are using the free version of Polygon which allows 5 API calls per minute. I will install a package called Backoff. 
To handle this kind of situation we will be using a concept called, exponential backoff. An exponential backoff algorithm retries requests exponentially, increasing the waiting time between retries up to a maximum backoff time. I will create a decorator above process ticker function. You can check out the official docs. I will give a upper bound of 5 minutes, so every 5 minutes is a kind of cooldown period. Check status will return true or false based on the status code 429. Now, let's run the code and see what happens. You can see after 5 API calls, it's now in waiting state, the process is not terminated. It will wait for 5 minutes and retry the remaining execution. I will fast forward the video to show you the progress. Ok, now you can see the process has been terminated, and we have successfully received all the API response. This is one of the great benefit of using exponential backoff. Let me now complete the remaining code of uploading files to S3. I have already created a bucket. At last, I will write down a utility function to delete all JSON files once all process is completed. Let me do a dry run, to test everything is working properly, and files are getting uploaded. The logic is working. Let me also check the delete files. Nice. It's working too. Let me remove the hard-coded API keys, and now we will go ahead to create the Docker file. We will dockerize this image and it will run in the container mode through AWS batch. Make sure to update your requirements.txt file. I will go to the Elastic Container Registry console and create a repo, and name it as Batch Demo. Retrieve the auth token by running the command in the terminal. I will be using the docker build x command, to run this image in AMD64 machine. You can also build image for ARM64, but make sure your code is compatible.
Our image has been successfully pushed. I just forgot to mention that I already have an IAM account, with all the necessary permissions with tokens configured with AWS CLI. I'm not covering that topic, as I expect you are already familiar how IAM account, access keys etc works. Let me delete all the files from the bucket. I will show you through AWS Batch, the new files going to be created. I'm in the AWS Batch homepage. Let me quickly create the compute environment. I will choose Amazon EC2, provide a name, and choose role as ECS instance role. Make sure to give minimum CPU to zero. If there is no batch operation going on, then the instance will be terminated. Instance type is going to be C5 family, as we will be running our container in AMD64 architecture. If your Docker file supports different architectures, then go for optimal. You can ignore the additional configuration, as we are focusing on simple batch operation. Same for network configuration, I am going with the defaults, you can choose based on your use case. Nice! Our compute environment is getting ready. Let's now create the remaining part, job queue and job definition. I will provide the execution timeout as an upper bound of 1 hour. For the job role, I will choose Batch Demo. This role is already created. But I will show you a quick snippet, how you can create this. Go to IAM Dashboard, click on Roles. Click on Create Role. Under Use Case, choose Elastic Container Service Task. Provide S3 full access, this is not a recommended approach, but follow defense in depth strategy, and narrow down your permission controls. And that's how we created the new role. Resuming back to our job definition, I am going to provide 4 CPU and 8 GB of RAM, reserving for my container. I was speaking earlier about the environment variables, so now I am going to provide the information related to S3 bucket in the API key. There is no change required for Linux or file system configuration. Our job definition is created, let's begin by initiating a new job. I am not going to change anything. Our job is triggered, and within few seconds, it will be in runnable state. 
Let me check the EC2 dashboard. Anytime soon you will see a new instance launched. An instance with C52X large capacity has been selected. Let me wait for a few seconds. Once it reaches the running state, Okay, now it's on running state, then I am confident that the data will start uploading in S3. Amazing! You can see the data has started populating. I will fast forward this video because there is a rate limit, and the cooldown period is of 5 minutes each. Twenty objects has been uploaded, and you can observe the time difference. The batch has been completed successfully, and it took around 15 minutes to process. Within few minutes, the EC2 instance will get terminated. Finally, the API is working fine, and we received the information for the Tesla company. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Make sure to share across your friends and colleagues, and do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.